Hi, my name's Alan Smith, and this is the third in a series of webcasts for the BizTalk uh, 2010 Light and Easy series. And it's going to be continuing the theme of the other two webcasts. And I'm going to be looking at publishing a business rules policy as a service. So the last two webcasts uh, have shown how we can actually uh, call uh, business rules using .NET code. So we don't need to be using uh, the BizTalk orchestration engine uh, to actually access uh, the business rules functionality. And this is a great advantage uh, in a number of projects that I've seen this used where they, they don't really want to uh, have all of the messages running through uh, BizTalk orchestrations. They want something that's quite lightweight. But they do want to benefit from the, uh, the great functionality that we've got uh, with the rules engine uh, in, uh, in BizTalk server. Now it does have a couple of limitations in that we do have uh, dependencies on a lot of the bits and security and connection to the rules engine database. So if you want to make something a lot more versatile, we can actually make these rules available as a service. Now it's not like publishing an orchestration or publishing a schema as a web service. We don't have a wizard that's going to do everything for us. But it is fairly basic to be able to implement this. So what I'm going to do is to take the solution that I've been building in, uh, in the first webcast and modify that so uh, the business rules can be called through uh, a Windows Communication Foundation service. So this webcast is really going to continue from the theory that we covered in the first webcast. When I was looking at using a .NET class and passing the .NET class across to the business rules engine using a C Sharp code. So what I've got here is a Windows Presentation Foundation application here and when I click on the process button what we're going to do is to generate a new instance of this expenses claim class and we're then basically using uh, the business rules engine uh, by basically calling the expenses approval policy and passing in the actual claim. In the second webcast I actually added uh, a logger uh, which is this class here, very simple class to just to interpret what's actually going on in uh, the, the rules engine here. And the business rules I'm calling is this uh, fairly basic one that I've got here where we've got a sales department, a technology department and we're controlling the actual expenses uh, that these people can make and get automatic approval based on the category and the department uh, and the uh, amount. So just a refresher of how this uh, solution works, I uh, click on the play button and uh, run this in debug mode and I'm just going to expand the window a bit. So Alan Smith, the department is going to be uh, technology and uh, the project is going to be the cloud rules uh, POC and the category is going to be books. Click on process and this has been approved. We can actually see all of the decisions and all of the uh, rules are firing uh, in the actual uh, rules engine here. If I change uh, the department to sales and attempt to claim uh, for books that uh, is going to uh, require approval there. If I change this to uh, travel, still re requires approval. And you can see that the sales department uh, has a limit of 250 on travel. So if I go back here and change this to 200, it gets uh, approved. Now this solution is okay, um, but there is one major disadvantage of this solution. Uh, in order to run my uh, actual Windows application, uh, I'm going to need to actually have the bits uh, for the business rules engine installed on my machine and the rules engine uh, update service and so on. Now that is covered under the BizTalk license. Uh, it's not a licensing problem. However, it may be a, a deployment problem that I've got a load of uh, line of business systems and they want to uh, start accessing uh, and uh, taking the benefits of having uh, this, uh, this great rules engine that we've got in BizTalk. However, I don't want to have to uh, install uh, the bits on all of these machines. So what I really want, instead of the application uh, connecting directly to the rules engine, what I really want to do is to place uh, a Windows Communication Foundation service in here. So I've actually got an expenses service that I can call, and that service uh, will then call the rules engine, and other applications can just call the service there. And then I don't need these applications to actually have the dependency on the rules engine. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is to remove my dependencies. Uh, you can see that I've got a dependency on uh, the actual uh, expenses class and I'm going to uh, remove that uh, reference there. I'm also going to re remove the reference uh, to the uh, Microsoft Biz uh, Business Rules Engine there. So this application uh, has just really got the standard uh, references there that we got in. I have got now no dependency on the Rules Engine. Now that's basically broken the build uh, because a lot of my code is referring to the uh, Expenses Claim class and also to the Rules Engine class. So what I'm going to do is just go in and uh, comment out this code. And my rules logger uh, isn't going to be much help here. Uh, I can't actually use that if I've not got the dependency on the rules engine. So I'm going to uh, just basically delete that class uh, from the project there. Pressing on F6, hopefully we've got a successful build here. Uh, still uh, a couple of uh, errors on this these two usings. So I'll just basically delete these two usings. We're not going to need those guys anymore. F6 again. And we've got a clean build. 
Okay, so the next stage is to actually build the Windows Communication Foundation service. Uh, so what I'll do here is just basically add a new project. And I'll call it biztalkrules.rules service. And uh, it's going to be a Windows Communication Foundation service application. Okay, now I'm just going to delete uh, the actual services that were created here. And generate a new WCF service called uh, Expenses Rules Service. Now, uh, because I've already generated uh, an expenses claim here uh, in this project, and this is the expenses claim that I'm, uh, I'm passing off to the, the business rules engine, what I can do uh, is just attribute this to be a Windows Communication Foundation data contract. So first of all, I'm going to add a reference to uh, system.runtime.serialization, and then I'm just going to attribute this as being a data contract. Control dot uh, to drop in the namespace for system runtime serialization, and these guys are going to be data members. And that's a successful build there. Now, uh, I normally uh, put in some ordering and put in some namespaces here, but just for clarity, uh, I'll skip that and just do a quick and dirty solution to get this, uh, this set up and running. Now, going back to the expenses rules service, uh, I'm going to actually add a reference uh, to uh, the rules engine.dll. Uh, we're going to need to actually call out to the rules engine from that project. And I'm also uh, going to add a reference to the actual uh, project, uh, the uh, expenses uh, project there. So I've got an access uh, to, to that class. Now I'm going to go in and uh, basically build up my service here. So going into, first of all, the actual uh, interface here, I'm going to uh, rip out this uh, do work method here. So this method is going to return a string, process expense claim we'll call it, and it will take it an expense claim named claim. And I'll just do a control dot just to drop in uh, that actual uh, using a clause there. Now I need to go and implement uh, that in my service uh, and I'll use that again with the control dot operator just to provide the prototype for that method. I can rip out this do work method because it's not actually going to do any work and uh, then just basically provide the implementation here. Now I've already got the implementation on the click event in my main window so what I'm going to do is just basically uh, copy that here go back to my service and just paste in this code here now I'm not actually using a claim logger I could implement that if I wanted to but I'm just going to uh, remove that there to get this uh, this uh, running uh, running quickly there and just uh, I think uh, drop in the actual namespace for the business rules engine and that seems to be fine now the only thing that we're not doing uh, is returning a string uh, so what I really need to do is to uh, return Claim.status, and that's basically going to uh, return uh, from uh, the actual web service uh, the status of, of the claim that I've sent in there. So uh, F6 on that. Hopefully we've got a successful build. Uh, that looks to be fine. Now what I need to do is to modify my application uh, to make a call out to that service. So in order to modify the application, I'm just going to uh, add a service reference here. Click on the Discover button just to find any uh, that we've got in the project. And we've got that expenses rules service, and I'll just basically. Uh, give it the appropriate uh, namespace okay that now I should be able to go back to my main window and just modify the actual uh, code that I wrote uh, to actually use the service uh, instead of calling directly to the business rules engine now we are going to generate a new claim here so I can just uncomment this and now this expenses claim when I do the control dot operator is actually in uh, the expenses rules service reference it's basically the uh, the class in the proxy uh, that has been generated when I added this service reference and what, what that means uh, is basically uh, generating this proxy class it's got the same properties so I'm just uh, reuse it reuse this code again uh, I don't really have my tracking logger so I can get rid of that and what I'm going to do is I'll just basically um, remove that code there. So what I'm going to do is call a service, so I'm just going to uh, generate a new expenses uh, rules service client. So that's uh, the new service client, and what I'm going to be doing is string status is equal to clients dot uh, process expenses claim, and we can pass in the claim. 
Once we've got the status back, uh, I'm just going to uncomment this code here. And I can delete the uh, the actual section for the, tra the uh, logging tracker because we haven't got that anymore. And I'm just going to set uh, the uh, content uh, for the label to whatever uh, was uh, returned by my uh, service call. And just to be uh, good, I'm going to close the client as well. Client.close. In case we're using any clients uh, that are going to be uh, retaining a session, uh, such as using security in the WS HTTP binding. Now, uh, let's just see if this works. I'm going to click on the play button uh, and see what happens here. You can see that we've started the actual uh, host here at this uh, location here. So I should be able to uh, basically have a look at the actual service uh, that's being exposed here. And here's the SVC endpoint for my service. So that's the expenses rules service. And you can see that we're still here just describing uh, the actual uh, service that we're going to be uh, working with. And that's the action that we're using this process at expenses claim there. So that's uh, the uh, whistle for that service. So let's see if it works. Uh, I'm going to uh, be in the technology department and I'm going to order a copy of BizTalk uh, 2010 Unleashed. I think I mentioned that in the other webcast. Uh, a friend of mine, Charles Young, uh, was writing some really uh, good content on uh, the business rules. I saw him uh, presenting uh, a session on the business rules engine, so if you do want really deep uh, coverage of the business rules engine, I highly recommend uh, getting a copy of that book. Yeah, so that came through as being approved. Uh, what happens if the book costs 800 crowns? It's still approved. Uh, push it up to 3,000. And that's saying it requires approval. We're going over the threshold uh, for technology in books, which I'd set to 1,000 uh, crowns there. And then uh, we'll go for the uh, travel, just to make sure that's working. And we'll go for 200 crowns uh, for a uh, taxi in the uh, sales department. And that comes through as uh, being approved. And for those of you in, in America, 200 crowns is probably about $30, $30 there. If we go up to uh, 300 which is probably about $35, it's going to uh, require approval there. Okay, a uh, quick summary here. Um, survey, service enabling uh, the business rules is really going to increase uh, their reach. The clients don't have to have this dependency on the BizTalk server bits. They don't need to have the uh, Rules Engine Update service installed. They don't need to have the connection uh, to the, uh, the actual uh, Rules Engine database. So that means uh, that uh, across our enterprise, uh, we can have lots of different applications and line of business applications, leveraging uh, the business rules engine that we've got uh, as uh, we're just making them available as uh, services. So they don't need uh, to know anything about the business rules engine. All the clients need to know is just how to call uh, a web service. We've also got good control over the security uh, of that web service uh, with the actual rules engine. We may have issues if we want to govern who can call what policies uh, and who can't call uh, certain, uh, certain policies. But as uh, we've got a great uh, security model in Windows Communication Foundation, we can use that to control who can access uh, our services and therefore who can actually uh, call those policies. And it is uh, very simple uh, to implement. You know, It's very quick, it took me about 10 minutes to run through and do a quick and dirty implementation of that. And uh, I was just basically passing the Windows Communication Foundation uh, data contract directly uh, to the rules engine. And that seemed to uh, work fine in my, my particular scenario. So uh, drop on to cloudcasts.net now and again uh, and check out uh, the webcasts that are going to be appearing in the BizTalk 2010 light and easy uh, webcast series. There's a whole lot of us who have been uh, producing and are going to be uh, producing some of these, uh, these webcasts in the future. So drop back and uh, see some of the content.